In today's ThingScript tutorial, we'll build a simple scan that lets us build a watch list for the month of March. For our scan, we'll have two different pieces that we're looking to combine. The first will be a seasonal analysis component, where we're looking to identify all of the places in which March is a really strong month for that particular stock or ETF. The second will then be layering on trend information with the market pulse where we'll look at both the daily and the weekly trend, trying to find where are the strongest trends as we head into the month of March. The goal at the end of this video is to build a very simple, quote unquote, obvious watch list for the month of March. What I mean by obvious is these will be all of the stocks in which March is a strong performing month using our seasonal analysis indicator, and we have strong daily and weekly trends as we're heading into this already strong performing month. Now to build the scan, there's four different conditions that we'll need to incorporate. The first two are around the seasonal analysis indicator. This is a free indicator. I'll leave a link to it in the description box below. But using code from that indicator, we'll build a piece which says, hey, March needs to be an up month, meaning we must close above where we opened more than 80% of the time. Now, because we're using the scan tab in Thinkorswim to make this process 10 times faster, we're limited to some of their constraints, one of which is around how much historical data we can have. We'll be using the weekly time frame to push this as far back as we can, where we're limited to about three years worth of data. So that means we'll really only be able to look at the past three marches, and we'll need to do a lot of the legwork manually. Now, because of that, it's in our best interest to have a smaller starting watch list so that's where these other three conditions come in. We'll check to make sure March is overall positive in terms of the average gain that we see. So we don't see March being a negative month, more so a positive month. After that, we'll layer in the daily market pulse, where we're checking if this market pulse is in a market stage of acceleration. And we'll repeat that same process with the weekly market pulse, with the overall idea being looking for strong trends, daily and weekly, along with strong marches, and then layer on a little bit more than just three years, we'll layer on the max available data to make slightly smarter decisions. Now let's get started with jumping into our scan tab. Now, the first thing I have in my scan tab is the group of stocks I'm scanning in. I've set this to a default of weeklies, which means we're looking for all stocks which have weekly options. You can find this list by coming into public, and down here you'll find weeklies, which is the default watch list I've loaded on. Now let's start with first adding in our seasonal analysis filter, and to do that, I'll click add filter, study, and keep in mind study filters are only available in the live money version of Thinkorswim. And that will then give us this new study filter where it always defaults, at least as of right now, to the ADX crossover. Now let's replace this with our seasonal analysis indicator. And to do that, I'm going to come into our charts tab here. I'll click the studies icon, and I'm going to search for the seasonal analysis indicator, which I already have loaded on my chart. And when you find it, click the scroll icon to open up the code of the seasonal analysis indicator. If you don't already have this, I'll leave a link again in the description box. It's a free indicator and you'll want the code to be able to follow along. Now I'm finding all of the March code, which is this section right here from lines 36 to 46. And I'm going to copy that and come back to our scan tab. And here I'll click the pencil icon. Let me bring this down, click the ThingScript editor and I'll paste in all of our March code. Now we'll get an error which says add label is not allowed in this context. We'll fix that in just a second. The add label code is nice to have for a reference for the plot variable that we'll need to create. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll say plot signal, and this is what Thinkorswim is going to actually scan for. So here let's add in our two conditions that we said using seasonal analysis. The first was we wanted March to be an up month more than 80% of the time. So for that, I can say is March up divided by the total number of marches greater than 80. So in this case, since we're only going back about three years, that means all three marches must have been positive marches. 
And we'll add in a second condition, which says March average difference must be greater than zero. That means it has to have been a positive month overall for the month of March for all three years. Now I'm going to remove the add label code and click OK. And before I do, actually, let me change this time frame to the weekly here. And now I'll click OK. Now let's add in our market pulse condition. So one more time, I'll click add filter. Study filter gives us that default ADX. Let's come into our charts. And this time we'll copy our market pulse code, also a free indicator. Let me open this up and I'm going to copy all of the code right now. Actually, we'll only need till the VMA right here. So I'll click OK. Come back to our scan tab. Click the edit icon here, bring in our ThingScript editor, and we'll paste in all of the Market Pulse code. Now, let's start by first figuring out what is the condition in which the Market Pulse is green or in a stage of acceleration. Now, the add label code here makes that really easy. It's when we have the bullish variable being true and the closing price is greater than or equal to the variable moving average. So let me pull that out. And I'll add that to a comment here, and I'll delete all of the remaining code. Now, let's add in a new condition which says plot signal is equal to, and I'll remove that comment code, and we'll set it equal to all of the places in which we have this bullish variable being true, and the close is greater than or equal to the variable moving average, since this is what sets the stage of acceleration. Now, with this, we'll get an error which says exactly one plot expected. We come up. Our second plot is the actual variable moving average line, which we can change from a plot to a def, and I'll delete our set color code. Now with that out of the way, I'll click OK, and that is our daily market pulse condition already met. Now let's create our weekly one. So I'll add in our last study filter. Now instead of going back to the chart, I can simply come into our daily market pulse code, copy everything, come into this ADX crossover condition, ThingScript editor, paste that in since this is looking for the same exact condition, but this time instead of the daily time frame, we'll change this to the weekly time frame. So now what we have are three custom study filters. The first is looking at our seasonal conditions. Keep in mind this is only going back three years, so three marches. We then have a market pulse condition on the daily and a market pulse condition on the weekly. Now let's click scan and see what we're left with. Here we have 42 results and I have our Market Pulse dashboard script also loaded, which allows us to confirm that we have these double greens across the board. Now let's sort by say volume here and let's choose SPY. That seems to be the most obvious one that we should start by taking a look at. So if we came into SPY, now what we can do is instead of just uh, three years, I've loaded in our max available data, and that goes back more than 20 years in SPY, where we can see currently we have more than 60% of the time, March tends to be an up month, and on average, that gain is about 0.75%. Now, one thing I want to call out, which a fellow YouTube member actually found, is Thinkorswim does occasionally give you some glitches, and the way that you can debug this is by using chart bubbles. So let's say you wanted to see all of these marches to analyze them in a little bit more detail. I'll come into our seasonal analysis indicator, scroll down, and underneath March, we can say add chart bubble. And here I'll say only show this chart bubble whenever we have this March difference variable being true, which is only calculated at the end of the month. So that keeps our chart bubbles nice and clean. We'll plot this at the closing price. And inside of this bubble, what we can actually output is the as percent difference. And we can then make this bubble color dot yellow. And what this one simple line will do, if I click apply, is allow you to then go back and study all of the different marches to see what is being used for this particular calculation of March. So that's one way where if you want to actually narrow into the marches, study them in a little bit more detail, this one simple one-liner is what you can add to the seasonal analysis indicator, swap it out with whatever the month is, 
and that lets you see the chart bubbles on your chart. So that's a nice little trick to add. But if we come back now to our scan watch list, that was a little bit of a detour. We have a list of 42 stocks, which we can dive into more detail with more than just three years worth of data. So that's how we use the scan tab to narrow down from what is usually a fairly large watch list down to just 42 stocks. If we want to see what our watch list started with, I can detach the scan tab, remove all three of our custom conditions. And if we look at Justice Weekly's options watch list, there's more than 606 stocks in that watch list. So we went from 606 down to 42 stocks where we have seasonality on our side, the daily market pulse on our side, and the weekly market pulse on our side. From here, you can save this as either a scan query or we can actually save this as a manual watch list, say something like March 2024, save, come back into our charts here, load it into the watch list on the left-hand side, so inside of my personal ones, March 2024. Make sure you have your connected uh, linkage here with the one and one with the same colors. And now, if I simply just click ACN, I can get the data for the max available time frame on the daily time frame and go through step by step and figure out which stocks I'd like to dive deeper into. So there you have it. We built a simple scan, which allowed us to scan for all four of these conditions. We turned that into three custom study filters. And with that, we were left with 42 stocks and we saved those as a custom watch list, which you can now very quickly use your arrow keys and go through on your thinkorswim charts and figure out which are the ones you'd like to really zoom in on. Take care, everyone. I hope you found this ThingScript tutorial useful. I tried to go as slow as possible. You can practice this on other watch lists as well or for other months. It's the same idea. I'll see you in our next ThingScript update. If you'd like to find more similar tutorials, be sure to check out our website, tosindicators.com. And again, all of the indicators I talked about in today's video are completely free and will be linked in the description box below.